Hello Stampers, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Thank you so much for joining me for this video today. I started a series last week using window sheets and I'm super, super excited to show you a whole bunch of different ideas with these. I love window sheets. I, I think they have that magic that when you give them to somebody, they're like, wow, that is so cool. And there's so many different things you can do with them. So I made this card, and you're also getting a sneak peek today. I'm letting you peek at this Painted Harvest stamp set. This is a brand new stamp set coming out in the Holiday Mini Catalog, which goes live Friday. Oh my gosh! If you don't have a Holiday Mini Catalog or a Stampin' Up! Demonstrator, and you'd like to get your hands on this beauty, it is filled with fall, Halloween, um, there's even some New Year's in here and lots and lots of Christmas. You will love this catalog, and it's also great for all the ideas that they share in it. So if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you don't have a holiday mini catalog, I want you to pop me an email at kelly at stampabove.com, and I would be happy to send one out to you. This Painted Harvest stamp set can be ordered as a bundle with this leaf punch, which matches these images here. It's just a really nice size for leaves. So you're getting a sneak peek today, and I'm showing you some cool things with window sheets. And on top of that, because I'm a giver, people, I'm going to show you a fun fold that you're going to love. You get three amazing elements in this video today, plus a lot more. I mean, I give you a lot of tips. I started off with a couple different kinds of shaker cards. So if you miss this, you head over to my YouTube channel. Just look for Kelly Atchison on YouTube. You'll find my channel. And I will show you exactly how I made these super, super cute little shaker cards. Today, I'm going to show you a different way to use your window sheets, and I'm calling this the floating image. I have stamped these words directly on my window sheet. Isn't that neat? And this is a fun fold. Let's get started. I'm going to bring in my paper piercing mat. I like to use this as my surface to stamp on. For this particular technique, we are going to stamp directly on our window sheet. I love watercolor effect stamps, and that's what drew me to this right away. While it is geared towards fall, and this makes a beautiful sunflower, I have to tell you, it makes a beautiful flower in other colors too. I'm going to use the greeting here that says your kindness means so much more than you will ever know. This is stays on ink. You have to use a permanent ink when you're stamping on a non-porous surface like window sheets. You can also stamp on coasters, um, glass, anything that is non-porous and this ink will dry. I'm just going to stamp this right in the middle and notice how I'm bracing my hand when I stamp this. I've got my, my hand laying down, I've got my hand over here bracing. Because we're stamping on a non-porous surface, sometimes it can be slippery. So you want to brace yourself when you stamp so that you don't wiggle or slide your stamp. And there we go. We've got a beautiful image there. Okay, now that we have this part done, I'm just going to show you a couple more elements to this particular card. This is our card front. And I'm going to just quickly stamp that up with soft sky ink and this beautiful leaf image. So I'll be right back. Okay, now that I've got that done, what I did with this is I took one of my um, circle dies from the layering circle framelits and one of the scalloped ones. I am going to take my card front and I'm also going to put another piece behind it and I'll show you why in just a second and I'm going to hold it in place. Um, my card by the way is five and a half by eight and a half folded in the middle. Then I've got another layer that's four by five and a quarter and this is going to be the backing for the front of my card and I'll show you in a minute why I want to do that. I'm going to take this framelit and I am going to Hold this little piece in place and you know what here's a really good idea that I didn't even think of let's put a little bit of adhesive right there to hold it in place so I don't have to worry about it moving I didn't even do that on the on the prototype that I made that was genius 
Okay, here we go. I'm going to die cut both of these layers because who knew you could die, die cut two layers at once and it cut all the way through. I was shocked. I've never done that. And maybe I'm just a little slow. <laughs> I'm just going to put this towards the top of my card and center it on the front. You're going to jiggle a little bit here, so don't get dizzy. And see, this cut through both of those layers. It's like magic. I didn't know it would do that. So we learned something new today. You could keep these two pieces and use them for something else if you'd like, or you can destroy them like I just did mine. <laughs> okay, next, I always like a frame around my circles. It's just a thing with me. So this is how I made my frame. I am going to take a piece of crumb cake cardstock and I need a circle. This is just a scrap, so I'm not gonna give you any measurements on it. Oh, and by the way, this circle die happens to be about two and three eighths inches round. So here's my circle. And again, I can keep this and use it for something. I didn't destroy that one. And next I'm gonna come in with the scallop that's just a little bit bigger. And this makes a beautiful frame around your peekaboo windows, as I like to call them. Oops, I think I moved it just a second. I want to try and get this very centered because this is going to be a tiny little element. And there we go. Now we have a frame for our circle. Okay, here's what I did. I am going to take my piece of window sheet and by the way, this is Soft Sky cardstock, and I'm just going to add some snail adhesive. This works best. Liquid glue doesn't work real good with window sheets. I'm going to lay this down. Let's bring this in so I can see it a little better. I'm going to lay that down, and I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to center this and make sure my words are straight, just like that. So now everything is attached, okay? Bring in a little liquid glue. And glue this piece down. This is going to fit perfectly as long as you use the same circle to cut the inside out as you did for the window in your card. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I wanted to show you that window. And why did I cut this piece? Well, here's why. I do not like the way this looks when somebody opens my card, and I'm kind of picky about that. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue it on the inside. And you have to make sure, oh, I just put glue on the wrong side of it. Dang it, you guys. Let me show you. <laughs> make sure, do a dry, dry run first because it has to go like this. It doesn't meet up like this. Do you see that? It's not real attractive. I could just cut a little bit off this edge though. Let's do that. I'm gonna do that. Hang on, see? And you guys think everything goes perfect every time. Nothing could be further from the truth, let me assure you. I would put this in my paper cutter, but I don't want to gum it up with the glue. So I'm just going to wing it and cut a strip off. Oh, well, that's not going to... Oh, yeah, that's going to work. <laughs> I thought I was doing so good today. Okay, so I'll show you the other card where it's a full-size piece in here. Okay, there's the front of our card so far. Then what I did is I put some fast fuse on here and I took a little bit of burlap ribbon just like this okay last but not least I stamped the pretty little leaf in crumb cake ink and this particular stamp set comes as a bundle. You can get this cute little leaf punch with it. And when you buy the stamp set and the bundle, Painted Harvest and the leaf punch, together you get a 10% discount. So who doesn't like a discount, right? 
And here comes my leaf. And I'm going to actually put my leaf on with a mini glue dot because that's what I find sticks best to this type of ribbon. Put my little leaf right here. And then I've got my bow jig and I'm gonna do a triple bow, one, two, three, using the white baker's twine. I wanted to put some type of ribbon on here because I just felt like my card needed a little something extra. And you know what? Baker's twine is almost always my go-to for that little something extra that my cards need because you get a ton of it. So it's inexpensive. It doesn't add bulk to your envelope. So you don't have to worry about paying extra fees for shipping. And it's that little tiny pop. You don't want to do something real overwhelming with a great big bow on here, I wouldn't think. So that's why I chose White Baker's Twine. I'm going to just add another little glue dot to the edge of my leaf. You notice how I curled the ends of these bows, or the ends of the, yeah, the ends of the bow. There we go. So this is the front of our card. Okay, now let me show you the fun fold part. Are you ready for this? Do you see that flower on the inside there? Oh my gosh. Ah, isn't that pretty? Now remember when I was talking about these being sunflowers, yellow sunflowers, fallish? I use soft sky ink on these. Gorgeous, right? Love this. Okay, let me show you one more tip here. Here is the inside of my card, and you'll notice while our cards always open this way, the inside opens that way, okay? Watch this. Look what I did before I stamped this on the wrong side because I'm used to them opening like this. Make sure you don't do that. It's easy to do. This card needs to be backwards, the inside part. You stamp up the front, and then you open it up. And I will show you quickly how this watercolor stamp stamps because I was thinking there was something wrong with it, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's the way it's supposed to be. So I'm just going to stamp in soft sky. And do you see how this is really, really pale here? It looks like there's it's deformed or something. It's supposed to be pale. It's also very pale up here, like something's wrong with the rubber. That's where this one comes in. This is your, this is your detailed stamp that I'm going to stamp right now. And to line these up, I just look at the center and then look at the center here. How does it fit best? Fits best just like that. And there's your beautiful flower. Oh my gosh, gorgeous, right? And then we might as well finish this little flower off for you. There's also a watercolored image for the inside, and I just did that in crumb cake. So here's where I started, and then I messed up and stamped this on the wrong side. Make sure when you're doing your card that you stamp the greeting on this that's backwards, and also another little flower on the inside. We always like that, right? Don't forget to stamp up your envelope. Hang on. I happen to have one right here. And again, you think something's wrong with that, but it works beautifully when you stamp both of these flowers. There we go. Now we've got our crumb cake coming right in there. And the other thing I wanted to show you, let me see, where's, here, I'll use this. This is a good scrap. Well, let me get another scrap. Oh, look at this. <laughs> I've got a die cut image here. I'm going to use it. You can also just take the more detailed flower in this Painted Harvest set and stamp that all by itself. And that is also beautiful. And I'm going to finish this up and see if I can make another card out of this. Not while you're watching here because I know you have things to do. But isn't that pretty? Just a beautiful, very soft watercolored image. We've got our envelope and our gorgeous, gorgeous card here. There you go, beautiful.